So I got through to Shepherd Studios and uh, I spoke to Bernie Williams and I said, who's doing the special effects, Bernie? He said, nobody. He said, well, I can't get anybody. He said, the industry's too busy. I just need somebody. Because we've got this big American coming home from MGM who's got five Oscars called Glenn Robinson. Mm -hmm. And we need an English special effects man to work with him. So I said, well, if you like, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> he said, when can you start? I said, well, I've got to give two weeks notice. He said, oh, I'll have a chat with the producer, Doug Twinney. So I said, I'll go and see Doug, and I'll ask Doug if I can leave tomorrow. And Doug was very pleased because he got rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> he was looking at the money he was going to save. <laughs> so I started on Flash Gordon, and uh, we went from there. Very nice. Melody, let's hear your story. How did it first get into your orbit? Well, um, I had a, actually auditioned for Flash Gordon, and the part was given to another beautiful lady. And, you know, we go on a bunch of business, life goes on. And I'm in New York. I'm just there for one week. I'm visiting my boyfriend, and we're having morning coffee, and the phone rings, and I hear, Melody, Nino. <laughs> what? Yes, I decided you are going to play there a lot, and you're thinking that I'd attend. I went, what? I had no idea. It was long off my radar by then. And I um, flew out that night. And I arrived in the morning with uh, some people who took me into a very odd room and shaved the front line of my hair, dyed my hair black, and had to put on the costumes, fortunately fit. I think I exercised that week. And I went in there, and they did it, and we started. I didn't have a chance to breathe, so it was, I had no preparatory time whatsoever. <coughs> so it was a pretty wild, uh, radical thing that happened in my life, and I really appreciate it. And again, I want to thank Mike for all, and the wonderful yes. guys, and everybody in this cast we had, and we were very blessed. And to have it happening yeah. 35 years later, it's, 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 it's a, and Brian will talk about this in the middle of the I'm not talking to you, I'm gonna just tell you right now. And that's why you put him at the end. So, um, anyway, that's my story. Howard, you've got a very interesting story of how you, you came to the film, uh, because there's a lot of folks that are involved in the film that couldn't be here tonight, either that are no longer with us, or they just couldn't physically be here, and um, uh, there's no one here from the band Clean, obviously, and Freddie was a big part of that, that band, and uh, you told me a fascinating story earlier about the, the collaboration between the band and yourself and making the, the rest of the soundtrack, and I, I'd love to hear that again, I'm sure they would. Yes, I mean, I mean, I I don't know how I got into this film, really, uh, rather the same as everybody else. Um, I'd, uh, curiously enough, also worked for Blake Edwards and Julie because I was musical director on uh, Victor Victoria, which was just about just before that. Uh, but actually how it happened was that uh, the engineer at CTS Wembley, that's John Richards, a very, very great engineer, I recorded all the Bond films, and uh, we worked together a lot. And uh, he rang me one Thursday afternoon. I was quietly at home in Barnes, and uh, he said, are you, "Are you doing anything much?" And I said, "No, I'm not too much." He said, "Could you get over to CTS?" He said, "I've got a few people here, like the head of Universal and Dino De Laurentiis and the group Queen." I said, "Just a minute." I mean, that sounds like quite a <laughs> gathering. <laughs> he said, "Well." Can you get over here fast? So I said, well, what do you want me to do? He said, we'll tell you when you get there. So we we'll drove out, out to Wembley, and, and uh, there's Dean, and I mean, he did, and he said, you know, he says, I've got a 50 million pound here, and I'm playing, playing the money in the bank. I said, you know, like, what's that got to do with me? <laughs> He's a terrible interest in the week. And, uh, and I said, uh, we, we have, the, we have a, we've got the Royal Silver money booked here for two weeks. But we haven't got any music. <laughs> so, I said, well, yeah, that's, a, that's a problem. I said, well, he said, anyway, that was the, the fact of the matter. We haven't got any music. And um, quite how that happened is, is quite a... Queen thought they, they could do it, but in fact, uh, I didn't, I, they didn't really come up with... They came up with something, but it was... Well, in fact, I won't go into that. <laughs> 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 but, 
Probably Dino said, happen. "Can you?" He said, "This is Thursday afternoon." He said, "Could you write a new a new score for the entire film by Monday?" <laughs> <laughs> so I said, "Well, I said I think if you if you got Beethoven and Tchaikovsky and everybody else all into the room and they all worked and they couldn't do it by Monday, <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway, we talked about it and uh, they said also we we want to." We want to fit music with the stuff that Queen has done into a score, but we want a classical score. We've got to have a huge score with a big orchestra. And so anyway, I gradually got talked into it. And I remember Dean, I said to myself, he said, what, what do we do with the orchestra for two weeks? It's cost a fortune. I said, well, you have, you'll have to pay them off. He said, well, you're, the, you're now the musical director. That's your fault. <laughs> I said, no, don't, don't. So, no, no, don't put that on me. So it was all like that. Anyway, I said it would take a month at least to write a, a full score. Uh, you did it in 10 days. I did. With well, pneumonia, I, I by the way. I didn't intend to do it. Yeah, he did. He had pneumonia. I, I nearly died days. doing that. Now, that <laughs> what, what in fact happened was this. I, I, they agreed on four weeks, and then and then the sound editor decided to go on holiday, and I got the timings, and then this and that happened, and by the t and then I got to do the contract. My agent was arguing about as you know. By the time I sat down, all the time, you know, two of the weeks had gone, <laughs> and I remember sitting down there, and I thought, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I. I I started writing, and I realized that it was the most colossal job to write. And I was writing for an 85-piece orchestra. In those days, you're writing, writing in pencil in a school. And uh, I didn't have time to play the piano. All I had time to do was write. So in fact, I, I ran out of time. And I, in, eventually, the time was actually a full 10 days. And the last four of those 10 days, I didn't go to sleep. Mm. Oh, I went out uh, at the <laughs> end of those four. <laughs> no, it's a terrible story. Yeah, no, it's, and, a great, it's a great story, but it, it, it's, it's, it's a testament to everything that everyone's been saying about how this movie was, like I said earlier, this confluence of strange events that brought yeah. it together in a, and sometimes very improvised. But let, let's move on here to, <coughs> to Peter. Peter, how did it first come into your. Uh, I'm going to use this. Yeah, that would be fine. I think, sure. I think I've got something on. Yes, yeah, I, I think we can. Might. Okay, oh, I, I, can I can take that. Yeah. Yeah. But you can have it back. There you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Howard, you can take it with you when you're done. You can take it home. If so, Peter Mike hadn't told me this evening that the first time we met, I was doing a television where I was playing uh, Brunel, mm -hmm. and uh, I couldn't learn the line. I found it very difficult to learn the line. It was, it was full of mathematics and commas and. and uh, mathematical problems. So I said, could I have a teleprompter? And that's who it was. <laughs> it was my coffee. Oh, no. Yeah, he was teleprompting me. I start he was teleprompting <laughs> <laughs> so, I think that's how it came about. The circle took place, though, didn't it? Thank you very much. Very nice. And then, uh, then along came Brian Blessing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it was uh, kind of a fake to come to. There was no fucker else in the place. <laughs> 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 no, 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 I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, 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 no. It's true. I mean, it's absolutely true. I kind of just, uh, in those days, like I do today, I look in the mirror, I see my face, and my beard, and my eyes, and I think, by God, you're all sexy. <laughs> <laughs> I won't go to my child and I saw him Buster Crabby it was wonderfully haunted me in Yorkshire, son of a coal miner. I pretend to be. I, I mean, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I pretended uh, to be a hawk man jumping down the embankments in front of the flying scots and all that. So I always wanted to play. And then I heard they were going to do it. I was doing I Claudius at the time. And there's, there's, well, there's no end to my talents. <laughs> in Brooklyn and God knows what. And I would say all, all the time that Mike was always kind and sweet. And I was going in there and I met Dino for the first time. Look, he, 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 he,
Hello, kid. I, you have a great kid. I got a bag of big swine, I like it. If you build a bag, then I want you to have a sword. I said, what's a fucking sword? A sword? <laughs> <laughs> I said, especially the most powerful man, and he was both of being very powerful men. I said, to show his power, he must most of the time just use his fists. <laughs> and then, like John Wayne, you know. But I have to, anyway, the thing went on and on. I had about three interviews. And I said, the professor, I said, well, I'll tell you what, Dino. I, I just, if you don't give me this part, I'll break your neck, I'll break your back, I'll tell yeah. you, fuck off everything. <laughs> 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 Stunned, stunned artists. They're all in it, all the lads are in it, Ginny, everybody, they're all in it. And I'm there waiting. And of course, it took about three days to get the dynamite, get the special effects, get the monsters, get us all. Oh, we've got to get up with your partner. That's it, then, I think. And, 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 and flapping wings. And, and, oh, and, and great flapping wings. And so forth. And then they remember them saying, Stem Mike said, and right then, Brian, and I had this great bazooka. Was it made the cardboard? And I said, Ken, come, somebody! And I said, Squadron 40! Come on, Flash! How about who wants to live forever? Dave! And down we went. I went. Mike said, Cat, cat, cat! Brian, we put in the special effects. <laughs> Fantastic! Everything just worked perfect. I played Portos and Three Musketeers and things like that. Well, now that we've got bollocks, and cocks, and tits, what was the other one? Got that out of the way. Trevor, what was it like working with Brian? You <laughs> <laughs> haven't got that long. No, it was fantastic. He used to be a joke to her all the time. Yeah. What? Come you on. Remember that one? Yeah. The last to dance is a queer. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. That's his famous one. <laughs> Every time I went on set, it's all the dwarfs. It was a part of it. The last who sits down is queer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it's Sam and me were kidding. Weren't they kidding? Were we kidding? Were we kidding? I can't remember. Yeah. 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 I take care was called Biro, and he had this broken nose. Yes, he did. And yeah. he was a rugby player. He was, yeah. Uh, and yeah. Uh, and he, had, uh, he had a puffy nose clip. Uh, he had a massive puffy nose clip. Yeah, he uh, and he, uh, he kept all the film of Flash Gordon on all the walls, and he was playing all the time in his pub. Because he'd love his beer. Which oh, was a lovely guy. He's the last character on the poster to your left right here. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, speaking of other characters, and, and back to some people who couldn't be here tonight, I'll throw some names out. Whoever wants to jump in with a story, feel free. But let's start with Ornella Muti. Anybody want to say anything oh, about working with her? I've, I've Melody. Ornella Muti. First of all, she was a ball. Yeah. And she and I got along so well. And when we had the open, and she's Italian. And when we had the, in case anybody knew, and we had uh, at the opening in 1980, uh, she came in and the and Duchess of Kent was going through the line and we're doing our royal bow. And the Duchess of Kent goes to him and says, oh, how nice to meet you. What was it like being, you know, having to kill someone who, who wasn't a human being? <laughs> and Amelia goes like this, because, you know, she's hearing all this stuff with an Italian. Beep, beep, I'm gonna beep. I said, Amelia, she means human person. Oh, I thought she meant me. <laughs> <laughs> I loved her. We had a bunch of this fight scene with the pillows. I'm telling you, we had a ball. <laughs> we just, we, we got along great. In fact, she came back to LA when I was living there and I went to visit her. And then 
I didn't work and she became famous. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> so, we'll move right along to uh, Timothy Dalton who played Prince Baron. Anyone at all? Okay, Tim Bob Dalton. <laughs> I was all there by myself. You know, everybody had a partner, and and I was, you know, and I love playing pathetic anyway because you, you get nice presents and free alcohol. And, um, um, he was so nice to me. He knew I, and, and I don't know what was his situation. He would have me over. We only had one day off a week, a Sunday, and he would have me over to his house and have brunch. And he was so nice to me. He really helped me get through. And no painty painting, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> he was a gentleman and very kind to me. Brian, did you have any hanky panky with the talking <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought he liked sex appeal. No, 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 it's, it's, I know he's not here to defend himself. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Absolutely, yes. I, of course, I never had a chair, I never had a chair, uh, and so they, they built me a perch. I had these wings on my back, it took half an hour to screw them on, but I couldn't sit down, so they built me a perch, and all the camera crews went, picky pot, picky pot. We had the Argentian girls, all right, within about ten weeks. Yes. The attention girls were there, all white, and I had this dark makeup on, like a fellow, really. And so, and I was sitting on my own, and, and the, the leading lady of the attention girls, a girl called Manga, who had enormous tits. I took the Renaissance, and, and, and she was almost like, oh, good, I've got to have her. She's so gorgeous, she's cool. He fancied huge tits. And, and eventually, she edged her way towards me. And then all the other girls came alongside her, and they came towards me, and one of the girls said, Excuse me, Brian, Magda, she thinks you're lovely. <laughs> she could see you as a caveman. <laughs> what? <laughs> I can't go. It took me half an hour to get the makeup off them, but I'm taking another hour to unscrew my wings. <laughs> you take somebody in a white makeup and so forth. I said, absolutely bloody hopeless, love, you know. I said, but uh, Timothy Dalton's crazy, and he looks like Errol Flynn. She said, she doesn't like him. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I always felt with Maggie that she wanted me to drag her across the floor if she fancied me as a caveman and hit her with a cup. <laughs> Timothy was awfully, awfully sweet. He's a great guy, and we, we had a, a marvelous time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, Mike, Mike was the boss. That's right. And, and, and he let me do what the bloody hell I like, which I loved, so I could do anything I bloody wanted, which is absolutely lovely. Uh, you know. It, I must admit, you never knew who was going to come on the set, and Ornella Muti came on with Fellini. Fellini was a little person. It was announced by the second assistant, uh, Deep Roy! Calling Deep Roy! And the silence, and on King, I, I expected to see Geronimo or Sidney Moore, and on came Deep Roy, who was about 34 inches high. <laughs> and he came on, his little dwarf, he sat alongside me, he said, I'm not a... Uh, I'm not a midget, he said, uh, I'm not a dwarf, I'm perfectly formed. Uh, I was meant to ask him how big was his cock. was with Max Moncito, who also couldn't be here tonight. So what was it like working with that marvelous actor and being his, his right-hand man in the film? Max. Max Moncito. Yes. Yes. One of the great actor. Yes. I mean, his versatility is extraordinary. Mm. Um, I love working with him. Mm. Yeah. And Ornella. You've had a lot of scenes with Ornella. It's Beautiful. Wonderful. Yes. Mm. Ravishing. Yes. Terrific. Well, I mean, I mean Tom was crazy about it, wasn't he? Yeah, he was sweating there every time he saw it. Maybe now that now that uh, now that we've all felt relaxed and <laughs> gotten to know each other, let's go down the road quickly. 
And for the performers, the line that you get asked to quote <laughs> the most <laughs> that find you uh, anywhere, in the streets, anywhere it should be. So, Sam, what do you get asked the most? Well, it's probably a toss up between uh, the, this means a psycho <laughs> to uh, Flash Gordon, New York Jets. <laughs> Uh, what do you get out to say? Well, it's go Flash Go. Yeah. 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 Flash, we only have 14 hours. <laughs> 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 uh, Peter, what, uh, do you get asked to quote the film at all? Your character, his lines? <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do people come up to you, strangers, and ask you to quote any lines, any dialogue from the from the film? Are you talking to me? Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm I should know. It's okay. I should have said your name again. I'm so sorry. Uh, do I remember any lines? Do, do people ask you to repeat any lines? No. Any fans? They don't. No. What, <laughs> any favorite lines? I, 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 with pleasure. And Brian, oh, I, no, I, just I, have one yeah. I think Peter sets up the whole film. Yes. Uh, in fact, there's Clytus does at the beginning. I mean, and so that uh, Ming at the beginning says, Clytus, I'm bored. Yes. What plaything have you got for me today? And he said, there's something in the XK says. So. Obscure body. And, I, whatever. and he said, and he said, uh, uh, obscure body. And the, the people there call it. And what is memorable from the feature? Uh, uh, Brian, I, I have a feeling. <laughs> <laughs> No, I know. I'm, what I'm, the line is I'm that you get asked? I can't think of it. It'll come back to me. But if you think of it, if you'd like to but say but it, but I would like to say that I, don't know. Uh, I went uh, about six months ago, probably on the Daily Mail. I was doing a big thing at uh, on the Downing Street on behalf of whales and elephants and things like that with Randall Fines. I got there very early and called. I came to the gates and called all the policemen plebs, which they love. <laughs> <laughs> You're all plebs, they love you. <laughs> so I went to the gates. I was opposite number 10. I was there half an hour early, and they said, so You can't go until the Prime Minister comes. And after about half an hour, he patted me on the shoulder. Hello, Hello, Prime Minister. He looks about 18. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what you do? I explained how I was doing. I can't go in, I said, until you go in. I have to wait for you to go in. And they said he'd been for a walk or something. And, uh, oh, you come in, come in, come in, come in. Right. And he made me a cup of coffee and, 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 and a little omelette, a simple omelette. And then he took me. Uh, and, and, there, and there was a whole government, and there, there was a whole committee, and so forth. And he said, oh, Brian, please. Would you do it? And I said, yes. And I stood on a chair and I stood on the table with the whole select committee and the whole camera and said, Gordon Delay! <laughs> You had, you know, Lorenzo Semple doing the, the script with Dino, I think, thinking comic book style, thinking 66 Batman, which had, I don't want to use this word, but everyone always talks about the camp, you know, aspect of it, which I don't think, but there is, there are bits there, but was there a language barrier between Dino and Lorenzo and the cast and the crew and Mike with the crew? You mentioned something earlier, Mike, about the language barrier and things taking a bit longer. Was that a, a major issue uh, throughout the production? Uh, no, not really. I mean, Danilo Donati, who did the costumes and the uh, sets, he was brilliant. I mean, the wonderful design. Did a lot of Fellini's films. And he spoke very little English. Uh, and I'm not sure he ever read the script. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, I, and the George's help and his team and my wonderful crew, 
uh, I really had to improvise. So I just, I, I, normally I keep a very tight, you know, tight, run a very tight ship, and I uh, realized that I was just going to have to relax and see what they came up with when I was there on the day, and then I would, with the help of everybody else, improvise. And I think that's partly why the film's got this kind of lightness. It's, got, it's, a, it's a bit like a souffle. It's not over, overproduced at all. Um, so a lot of it was accidents and things that occurred as you go along. Uh, the other day, I, was, uh, I, I remember, for example, when Ming put six the sword into the, the prince at the beginning, his name I forget. And I thought, well, why is his blood red? And I said, why don't we have blue blood? He's, a, he's an aristocrat, so we have blue blood. And in Arborea, when the, the young man was bitten by the thing, I had green blood, you know. So I was, there's a big article coming out in Empire, and I thought I'd better look on the, the website to see what's on. And there was somebody in there said, oh, we caught this director. His continuity errors all the way through it. There's red blood and there's green blood. So they really thought you fucked up there. <laughs> 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 so so strong. Uh, what about those costumes? Everyone talks about how heavy those costumes were, and Peter, you you had, you had talked about how how heavy the costume was, yeah. and you couldn't stand up for long. I mean, it, it you had a ball. Yeah, you had to rest on the ball because it was so heavy. Yes. Yeah. Had you worked in in a, a, a much experience with a full mask like that before on, in anything in any productions? Had I been in the mask before? Yes, for the length yeah, of a not that I remember. Well, you remember, I think. Yes, I think yes, I, would. I think you would. Yes. <laughs> I would. Uh, and, it was uh, very difficult because you had, it was so black. Yes. And you couldn't, you had to sort of transform something mm -hmm. through, which is very difficult to do. Yes. But it was, it was a challenge. And you did it wonderfully. Right, everybody? Oh, yes. Yes. There's a lot of craziness going on with the production, and then things start to wrap up, and then it gets a release. And I think at the time, I'd imagine Universal and Dino were all hoping for uh, a trilogy at least. I mean, this was the, the age of Star Wars, and everybody wanted to see more of this sort of, uh, sort of adventure. So what sort of happened? What happened with the release? Melody, you've got a great story about, and, and Mike as well, about the marketing and everything. And the difference between how it was uh, experienced and appreciated in America versus Europe and Asia and places like that. Uh, uh, Melody, I'd love to hear Melody. 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 Yes. But you know, like, I was born. No. Um, <laughs> um, it, it's very interesting because this film was a huge hit in Asia and Africa, family down here and throughout the continent and in England. And it did well in the United States, but for some reason, and Mike says this very well, which I will now pass the book back, about in, in the United States, the poster was Ming's face, not Flash Gordon's. And of course, Ming was not going to be someone who did the promotion. And so nobody knew, you know, got, got to associate, like with, with Batman, Christian, Christian Bale, and all that, to associate um, whatever you say on that side. 